Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, today we're going to be talking Clan Boss. Yeah, Clan Boss is the best place in the game. Without doubt, the best place in the game for you to earn those juicy rewards, the big shards, the big books. If Plarium could go back and nerf an area of their game for rewards, they would be nerfing this bad boy chest right here. Yeah, they can't do it. They'd lose half their player base. But if they could, this is where they'd nerf it. In fact, when Clan Boss first had Ultra Nightmare added, not many people could complete it. It was very hard. But over time, we've learned the game better. We advise people better. And there's just way more champions to do jobs, which we're going to talk about in this video, to get this job done. So what I'm going to be calling out here is what I think are two of the most key skills that you need to make Clan Boss teams work and do obscene damage. In fact, it will be the difference from you moving from Brutal Clan Boss, where those top chest rewards look like this, to Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss, where they look like this. Yeah, it's way improved. Good gear, good shards, and good books. So we're going to go through that today. I guess along the way, I'm going to talk you through other fundamentals that you'd like to have in a Clan Boss team. I'm also going to use the Clan Boss draft that some of the content creators are doing right now and are involved in as a bit of a, just a bit of a reference, which was almost proves my point in this video. Yeah, so myself, Deadwood, Cold Brew, Dub Raids, and YST, we're all going head to head in a Clan Boss draft where we were only allowed to pick epic champions. We're going for a damage off. Yeah, who's going to do most damage? By the way, if you come and check out Deadwood's stream on Friday, uh, we're going to be doing a live kind of like showcase of our teams. There's tons, like literally thousands of gems that are going to be given away. So make sure you go and subscribe to his channel and make sure you look out for his videos where he talks about that draft. So I'd like to thank Bloodline Heroes Alethas for sponsoring this video. It's really got one of the most unique kind of hero collector modes that I've seen. Really interesting. You can form your own champions. We'll get into that in a second. And it's also got some cool combat. So what are you waiting for? Download now using my link down below or click yourself on one of these QR codes popping around. You'll be able to download it and get yourself a free summon, some diamonds and some gold if you use my link. You'll be able to collect a new bloodline every two weeks. They're releasing new heroes every couple of weeks. You can build them out. You can breed them with other heroes and start to form your own hybrids. The hybrid system is really where the strategy starts to come into bloodline. You're able to breed together your different hybrids Right now, there's over a thousand different combinations of heroes you can collect by using the hybrid system and breeding them. And you can actually create some bangers to take down your enemies. So Bloodline really does have some stunning 3D visuals, great kind of fantasy style graphics. And you'll be able to take on other guilds in a guild versus guild war, taking your hybrids to take the enemies down. If you're able to win in these late game guild wars, this PvP mode, you can actually get yourself some Bloodcraft Legends who are some of the strongest champions in the game. So as I said, new Bloodlines, new Legendaries have been added to the game every couple of weeks. The game's constantly evolving. Don't forget, download using my link. You can do it on iOS or Android. You'll get yourself some free juicy rewards, including a summon, some diamonds and some gold. And obviously it benefits my channel as well. And if that wasn't enough, the first 30 people that comment to my pinned comment down below with your player account ID for Bloodline, you're going to get yourself a legendary orc champion called Ugrul to help you along your way. You're welcome. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so this video is not about unkillable teams. Unkillable teams is kind of like the cheat code. Yeah, if you pull yourself a man eater, if you pull yourself a helicaf, uh, a tower, a skull crusher, a demitha. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of ways now to build unkillable teams against clan boss. They are by far the easiest and the best way to kill clan boss. This video is about what if you don't have those champions? What if you don't have the, the cheat code to get an unkillable team going? What are the two skills that are often overlooked but are easily the best two skills in the game to move you from that brutal to ultra nightmare damage? Let me tell you. First one is ally protection for your team. Now, the ideal scenario is you get someone with ally protection on a three turn cooldown. This one's on a four turn cooldown, Jereg. Makes him harder to use, but actually, Jereg brings other skills which we're gonna go into in a little while as well. But ally protection is kind of broken in the game. 
Yeah, so the way it works is you protect your team for 50% of the damage they're going to take. Now with Clan Boss, he ramps up his damage every single turn to the point where you get to like turn 20 plus and he's hitting you obscenely hard. Now what Ally Protection does is it actually takes the, the protected damage before ramp up damage is added. So the Ally Protector takes full damage from the Clan Boss for whatever turn you're on, but his friends, he only takes a tickle every round from those, whereas they take the full protected damage. It's weird, right? But ultimately, your protector makes your team last a lot longer than they should. Yeah, and we're going to go through some of these champions in a minute, some of the real good ones. But I just want to call out a gear set which has got the same ability on it. And this is probably the most broken gear set for Clan Boss. Yeah, Guardian Gear, where it absorbs 10%, not 50, but 10% of all damage dealt to ally champions. So instead of like one person doing a 50% uh, reduction, Guardian Gear takes a, a nice smidge, a nice 10% of everyone. Also gives you a cheeky heal. And I'll tell you what, if you can have an ally protector in your team, plus two or three people wearing Guardian Gear, you last even longer. Because there's more of this kind of mitigation before the real damage happens going on. Which means that your people that are actually squishy and taking damage can last really long into the fight. So ally protection and guardian gear combined becomes a bit of a cheat code if you don't have those unkillable champions. Now I'm just going to bring in the draft here that we did because it makes a lot of sense to at this point. Just to kind of like hone in on a point. This is epics only. Okay, so we weren't allowed all of the big legendaries, and there are big legendaries that do this job. But you see, early on, I took Taragi the Frog, awesome ally protector. Yeah, we had um, Jareg picked up by Cold Brew, the one I just showed you. We had, who else picked up? Rearguard Sergeant from YST, really good ally protector. Uh, I know Deadwood's got one. Yeah, Skull Crusher. Skull Crusher brings ally protection, but also a counterattack. Counterattack means you get more hits. Yeah, so ally protection was pretty much picked up by everybody with the exception of nub raids who still potentially might even sub one in. I don't know. But you'll see that when we do the kind of live playthrough, you'll see how effective ally protection is going to be. Now, the second skill, which people don't really appreciate, and I think it's as important as ally protection, for getting some real decent numbers. We're moving from Brutal to Ultra Nightmare. And that is going to be the ability to increase the duration of ally buffs. This one, ally protection is probably a bit more out there. This one is totally overlooked. Totally overlooked. And it is one of the biggest skills in the game for building this type of clan boss team. Yeah, again, if you're not building unkillable, this is the second most important skill in the game. The reason for that is it allows you to build things like two for one speed tunes. What's that mean? It means that for every time the clan boss takes a hit, you take two hits. The more hits you get when the clan boss is doing less damage to you, the more damage you do. Simple as that. Just do more hits. So not only does it increase the duration of speed, so let's say you've got a speed champion on your team, high to tune. What it's going to do. Hiker Tune puts increased speed out there. This will increase the duration of that buff, which pretty much gives you infinite speed. If someone puts increased defense on, this increases that buff, gives you defense over all of the battle. If someone puts ally protect on, increases that buff, means you've got ally protect up for all of the battle. It's really, really important. And again, if we look at the draft, you'll see from the teams here, Sandlashed for Nub Raids is an extender. Um, Cold Brew did not take one. I've got Anchorite. YST picked up Godseeker and Deadwood. Uh, has yet to get one, but probably will pick up one for his sub. This part might look complex, but I need to show you it to just give you a feel for how effective these champions are. So I'm looking at here something called the Deadwood Calculator. What it does is it allows you to see what your champions are going to do before... Or, or what buffs they're going to have up before the clan boss is going to hit. So here you've got turn one. These are our buffs. AoE one comes in from clan boss. We move on to turn two. D 
this is what we're doing aoe2 comes in etc so it kind of goes left to right now when we get in sync with this speed tune basically what happens is because i've got a speed champion clod i've got a buff extender anchorites they're moving in the right order it means that every single one of my champions now hits the clan boss twice for every hit i do if i didn't have the buff extender in there i wouldn't be doing that with the speeds that i'm running i would be all over the place in fact i could show you by just turning off his skill i'm going to turn off right now his buff extender skill you watch how many hits i get when i turn this off still everyone running at exactly the same speeds we've gone from hitting 10 times per clan boss turn to basically hitting somewhere between six and nine yeah and it's all over the place i've got no control over what's going on but with a buff extender i've got full control and the cool thing as well is let me show you here how it works i've got a different champion who puts let's talk about some other fundamental skills we want for clan boss increased defense decrease attack weaken decrease defense yeah all of these skills are really really key for clan boss you want to run on a two for one you want to protect your team and you want to put out damage yeah so when someone like discard here puts out his increased defense still he puts it out over here see that it goes green increased defense and increased attack what happens is anchor right here extends that increased defense so it basically means i've got coverage of it for all of the hits same thing i've only got one person doing ally protection here to raggy goes on here where it goes green Anchorite extends it so everyone's protected for AoE 1. Uh, Taragi puts it out again here. Anchorite extends it so everyone's protected for AoE 2. And I've even got a cheekier bit of ally protection for the stun hit, which you would not believe how much that saves my Fane from dying in this particular team. Yeah, so these buff extenders, these champions are obscenely good. If you do want to find your own champions that do this, these skills, by the way, on hellhades.com, on the home page just down the right hand side or any champion page down the right hand side you could come into these quick links and you get to be like right buff ally protection find yourself champions that do this skill yeah so we have it updated here so it's like ally protection for your whole team these are all the ones that do it and really for app for clan boss you only really want this section ally protection for individuals isn't anywhere near as strong uh, unless they're bringing a whole bunch more to the party but it's this top group of champions you really want one of those in your team you could also be looking for the instant increase buffs yeah increase buff duration is the extender that i just talked about so you could come into this section and again you can find yourself champions that you own there's not that many of these but champions that you own that do this job because they are game changers now, when we go outside of those two fundamentals, there's there's things that I look for. So we're trying to get to a two for one speed tune. Yeah, so a buff extender plus anyone who does increased speed as a buff can get you there. In my particular team, I'm using Clod. Yeah, so he's got an increased speed buff. Uh, ideally, you, you have someone who brings something else as well to the party. So you know, Clod brings increased speed and increased accuracy and decreased crit rate, for example. When you're looking for champions you want them to try and cover multiple jobs but you basically want someone who's doing increased speed plus buff extender gives you your two for one speed tune that's a great base the other skills that you're going to want in your team if you can get them counter attack there's only three champions in the game that do it skull crush is the only epic they don't seem to want to add anyone else in the game for this skill but it is an incredibly strong skill so if you can squeeze it into your team it's very effective increased defense is another incredibly effective skill basically what you want to try and do is have as much damage mitigation as you can get so if you want to try and get pretty much to mitigation cap before the um diminishing return starts to get really weak so if you go over this number then basically it just adds less and less value yeah so 4200 is a good number for defense to have good mitigation without kind of getting that re reduction of of quality reduction of value for stats after you've got 4200 defense you really just should be scaling health yeah but if you've got someone who gives you increased defense buff so they're putting a 60 percent increased defense on your number 
you can actually be running your team at like 2750. Yeah, 2700 defense versus 4200 is way easier to get to. It means you can either scale more health or you can scale more damage. So this buff is incredibly strong, especially if you use a buff extender, because buff extender will push it out over your whole fight. Makes it incredibly good. Let's talk about some debuffs that we definitely want. First one on the list, decrease attack. If you are not unkillable, this is the most important debuff you can bring into your team. In fact, you have to bring it. Yeah, if we consider the draft again, decrease attacks. So Nub Raid, Sepulchre, a good decrease attack on our A1. Uh, Cold Brute, Venomage decrease attack. Shereg decrease attack. Me, Taragi the Frog decrease attack. Fane does decrease attack. YST, we've got Atatsu, I think, does it? Must do. Decrease attack. Deadwood has got Grizzled Yarl who does decrease attack. Yeah, if you don't have it on your team, you will die early. Simple as that. I can't stress it enough. If you don't have it, you'll be dead. Once you've worked out how to stay alive, you've then got to do some damage, right? So you need ways to improve your damage. So I've picked up, not in there, I picked up Fane for my team. She brings decreased defense and weaken. You drop the defense of the enemy clan boss, means you hit him harder. Weaken means you do more damage. Those two together are really useful for a damage dealer. Other than that, you do damage really through your masteries. So War Master or Giant Slayer, depending on the champion. You do damage through blessings, things like Phantom Touch do damage. Uh, Brimstone does damage. Or you do damage through things like Poison. Yeah, so another kind of good one to bring in is a Poison Ability Champion. If you can cover those fundamentals, running on two for one, ally protection in your team, buff extender in your team, increased defense, decrease attack on the enemy, weaken and decrease defense on the enemy, and a way of doing damage. It's actually quite a lot of things to cover, right? We're talking nine or 10 things really that you need to get in the mix. Then you will last a long time and you will beat up Ultra Nightmare and you will not believe how much more damage you can do. I just want to talk about a couple of gear sets to finish this video off because they are important. Gear sets makes make a massive difference, okay? If I look at those champions that I've been building out for my draft, so these epics, I've got my ally protector wearing damage mitigation gear. My ally protector is going to be taking full hits from clan boss. I do not want for him to be going down. So we've got stalwart gear takes 30% less damage from AoE hits. And I've got the improved version of it. I don't have as much of it, unfortunately. Defiant gear is a two-piece set, but you take 10% less damage. Oh, sorry, 15% less damage, but you also gain a 10% defense improvement. So these two gear sets are OP for your ally protector. Yeah, providing you can find a way to heal them. I then got a few champions in Guardian gear. So I've got myself clods wherever he is my clod guardian gear yeah so he's that extra layer of ally protection i have got anchorite guardian gear this card's being subbed in for me guardian gear yeah so basically everything i can do to last longer in the fight i'm doing in gearing defiant and stalwart on my ally protector guardian gear on my three supports and then my damage dealer I've got the best damage gear, uh, gear I can get on whilst hitting that base defense number, which when I add increased defense to it, will give me a high number. Yeah, so 2750 ideally, but damage gear. St uh, so you don't have to go savage and cruel, but cruel gear is good. It, pretty much you want to be using an optimizer or your brain to push out as much damage as you can get with your damage dealer. All of this is reliant though. On you being able to stay alive. So if you don't have a healing mechanic at all, then you have to just bring life steal gear. But you'd be surprised. Like I don't have a, an out and out healer in this squad of five. I've got a little bit of healing coming in from Anchorite. I've got a little bit of healing coming in from Clod. I've got self healing coming in from Taragi. But I still last a hell of a long time in this fight because of my gearing choices. Yeah, it makes a massive difference. If you're struggling with healing, then you can bring a champion that brings Leech 
as a really good debuff. That stops you needing lifesteal gear. The quicker you can get away from everybody having to wear lifesteal gear, the more damage you will push up uh, really fast. But as I'd say, if you're trying to push into this type of team, farm the Griffin in Doom Tower as early as you can and start to get yourself some Guardian gear going because it is it works right through to proper end game until you get yourself one of those unkillable teams. So look, guys, I hope that's been really useful. If you've got any questions about kind of how this stuff works, please drop it below or come and join my Discord and uh, we'll be very, very welcoming, I'm sure. Anyway, guys, don't forget the draft. You can win some gems. I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you later.